Hello everybody, Sanyar Engineer, MBA and Investor. In today's video, I want to talk about a research paper that we actually referenced last weekend. I want to talk about something I just found out about how different, different multiple edits are required for different vegetation, different fruits. I want to talk about all of that in this video. Now, before we do that, before we jump into today's video, you guys know what I will ask you. Like this video, smash it, destroy it. It's quick, it's free, it's easy. If you have not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And thank you so much for support, everybody. Let's keep the momentum going. So this paper, again, if I go back to the title, this paper, we went over it last weekend. If you missed out that uh, that video, please do watch it. It's a video where I sort of go over this paper high level. I talk about how CRISPR can eradicate and eliminate world hunger. It's literally the only technology right now that a lot of experts, researchers are making the case for because CRISPR doesn't just address the human diseases, guys. It's not just for human therapeutics, animal, livestock, agriculture, different application use, whether that's the material sciences, whether that's making things more greener, you know, better for the environment. CRISPR can do everything and literally, right, everything because it can literally edit genes, right? For the first time in human history, we have a tool that can edit genes at a reasonable cost, at a mass scale. And uh, the reputation of CRISPR, when I mean reputation, I mean the number of papers published every day, the number of people involved in this space, all of that is just growing every single day. And that is the momentum you need to shift a legacy world into a world where it is from analog to digital, right? It, that That's the analogy I use, basically moving a world from a legacy world to a more, a world where we can actually address problems for the first time in human history, whether that's cancers on humans, animals, whether that's agriculture, whether that's giving us greener materials, whether that is addressing the climate change problem, whether that is addressing the world hunger problem. And specifically in this paper, Specifically in this paper, they addressed the world hunger problem, right? Agriculture and food chemistry. They went really in depth with why they believe all these researchers, like I mentioned in the previous video, a bunch of uh, researchers from China and one from Pakistan, I believe. Uh, they basically came up with these, uh, these this paper here. And the most important part I want to talk about in this video anyways, is this line here. Let's see if I can uh, highlight this. Uh, let's see if I'm watching. We also shed light on different crop improvement strategies using CRISPR-based gene editing tools. We argue that the safe deployment of CRISPR-Cas technology for crop improvement can help scientists to develop climate-smart crop varieties, paving the way towards fulfillment of SDG to the zero hunger goal of UN, right? So when you see that, obviously, if you go through the paper, you will see uh, several headers, right, such as improvement of antibio stress tolerance via CRISPR-Cas, uh, improvement of grain, grain yield and plant architecture, improvement of photosynthesis via CRISPR-Cas. Uh, let's take a look at some other things here. Improvement of grain quality via CAS, CRISPR-Cas, improvement of nutrient use efficiency via CRISPR-Cas. Uh, so, and even, they can even have applications with CRISPR-Cas in, in plant breeding, right? You can actually edit the genes of those plants so they can breed more efficiently, faster, right? I'm putting that in quotation marks, uh, but you really got to read these bullet points here and you got to go through this paper to understand how this is done. But really what I wanted to do here, haploid induction, if you guys remember your biology biology uh, courses, you guys will remember this for sure, haploid, uh, diploid, and, uh, and so on. So uh, good times. So basically what's going on here is what I wanted to talk about is this, you know, this PDF document that they sort of linked with the paper here. I didn't get to address it in the first video, but basically it's a nice, I really love this diagram here, basically CRISPR cast system in the middle. And then you have different tools, different editing tools around it. Obviously the most popular one, I'm sure some of you are aware by now, it's the CRISPR cast line cuts where you gene knock it or replace it, right? But then you have base editing, right? And you have the RNA editing, gene knockouts, right? Gene activation, repression. So different, those application of CRISPR-Cas systems as they call it here. But what I wanted to put your attention to, to this, um, this link here, this paper, which I will link in the comments below, just as usual, 
is table S1, role of CRISPR Cas in development of disease resistant food crops. Look at this, guys. Diff rice being the species, right? Different bi bios biotic stress, right? Look at the targeted gene. They can tell which targeted gene using which system is efficient to sort of edit or to target that gene and basically, basically make it more resistant, right? And I just find that completely mind boggling, right? Um, look at this wheat, right? The different type of wheat, right? Look at tomatoes, right? You, you're using all CRISPR-Cas9. I want you guys to pay attention to this, right? I'm going through this list and I see CRISPR-Cas9, right? I see cucumber. I see again CRISPR-Cas9, right? I think I'm going to go all the way down here. I think I'm going to start seeing the base editing, right? Yeah, base, I start seeing some base editing, right? Base editing for this is the rice uh, herbicide, right? section, right? And the point here of me showing you guys this, right? What is the point here? What is the point? The point here is to show you guys that first of all, as it stands, we are able to tell which food, which gene is used, is needed to target in order to have a specific improvement, right? This is not revolutionary breakthrough. This was known. This research paper definitely did not find that out. They just basically extracted that from their reference, as you see on the last column. But the point here is that you can clearly see there's a lot of CRISPR-Cas9 cuts there, right? CRISPR-Cas9 is, quote, unquote, the first generation of CRISPR. And my point here, my point here is that although base editing, prime editing, and the second generation of CRISPR, whether that's HDR from Graphite Bio, whether that's Chardonnay or DNA from Caribou uh, Sciences, the point here is that all these companies like NTLA, CRISPR Therapeutics, uh, Editas, they're still they're still using a technology that basically what we're seeing in this paper is the dominant technology. Now, maybe not in the human therapeutics as we go forward with specific diseases. But there is a place and time for different tools. This is what this paper is basically stating here. I'm just reading you guys what I'm seeing in the table. I'm not saying anything here. I see some uh, some base editing here, but uh, clearly CRISPR-Cas9 is the dominant here in all of these, right? And the point here, again, is going back to this graph, uh, this table here, this image here, as we finish this video, is that you have these different tools, right? And these companies like Beam Therapeutics, CRISPR Therapeutics, NTLA, Caribou Biosciences, some of them are using different generation of CRISPR, but some of them are sort of tackling it from ex vivo versus in vivo. But again, the point here is that you have application for different uses. In this case, in this paper, they're arguing that specific, specific vegetation, specific of uh, vegetation, depending on the genes that need to knock out, for example, you need a, obviously a CRISPR-Cas9 knockouts tool, but maybe you need base editing for other type of applications. And that's what Dr. Liu mentioned in his interview with uh, ARK Invest. And this is what I wanted to boil this video to. Don't get stuck up with, you know, I, I see a lot of things going on on Reddit, on Twitter, people really boasting base editing, which, you know, I find it amazing. I love the numbers they released recently being therapeutics. I think the number was like 94% efficiency. I love it. But the point is that there are applications that CRISPR-Cas9 makes sense. There, are time, there is a time and place to use CRISPR-Cas9. And that is exactly why I believe there will be many, many winners in this space, whether that's CRISPR therapeutics, whether that's beam therapeutics, whether that is uh, prime medicine when they come public. I think from that interview from Dr. Liu with Ark Invest, as I mentioned in the past, it was very, very clear that you can't just put base editing on top of all other tools being the superior technology for all other cases. It's not black and white, right? Think of the analogy, boat, car, and airplane, right? You don't always use a boat, you don't always use a car, and you don't always use a plane. Depending on which application you're trying to reach, one makes the sense out of the other. You can't really even make the argument that making planes will yield you better rewards than making cars, right? It doesn't work like that, right? It's totally different markets. That's why there'll be many winners. You don't just put Tesla and Boeing in one category, although Tesla might get into the airplane business with electrical jets, right? But that's another uh, topic for another day. I wanted to leave it like this. Hopefully you guys appreciate this video. Leave me in comments below what you guys think about this paper. What do you guys just think about what I'm talking about and comparing different tools. In this paper, they're arguing for vegetation, but you can extrapolate that and use it for specific diseases on humans. I don't see why not. It is genetics at the end of the day. It is genes. 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Hopefully you guys appreciate this video. We will end this video like this. Thank you so much for watching. Like it, if you found value, share it. And thank you so much for the subscription, guys. The support has been amazing. Let's, let's keep the momentum going. Let's keep sharing. Let's keep this space growing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.